Hey everybody, pop up Friday, <laughs> it's John Hope Bryan, I tried to do this video yesterday and I apologize, I'm in one of the most remote places on the planet right now, actually the most remote landmass uh, on the planet, uh, six hours away from every place of, of, of well, any land, uh, and so the connection gets a little interesting here, so I apologize for you who signed on yesterday when we were doing this. Beautiful connection. Okay, there we go. So, um, I'm going to finish this video, um, and I'll be moving to another location um, in a few days, so you won't be dealing with this. Um, so, John O'Brien, founder, chairman, CEO. Uh, hey, uh, Crea. Hey, Chaz from uh, Atlanta. Chairman, CEO of Operation Hope, uh, America's first and largest nonprofit financial services network for the poor, the struggling class, the teetering class, folks with too much month at the end of their money. We've got a, a beautiful new book coming out next month, the memo. Please pre-order pre it now. Hey, Byron. Hey, uh, Ebenezer Wal uh, was it Walters. Hey, Zena at work. Uh, you are amazing. Kenneth. Yes, I can. I'm not, you know, don't, I mean, don't blame me this time, guys. The last time I was on the road, uh, this time, hey, uh, Marshall, I'm just standing in one place. So, uh, my apologies uh, for the connection. I'm, again, I'm in the part of the world. It's just not. It's just very remote. Okay, let's hit this uh, topic real hard. Um, the young lady just won a um, 750 million dollar uh, lottery uh, ticket, and she was brilliant in the hey Marie Glover, brilliant in the way in which she. Um, made her decisions. And this separates her from the 70%, in my opinion, the 70% of, of lottery winners who lose everything. I don't know if you know that statistic, but 70%, uh, hey, Lamont Atwood, 70% of all those who win the lottery lose everything. Did you hear that? Hey, Najee, civil rights. 70%, 70% of everybody who wins the lottery loses everything within five years. There's another 70% number that's very powerful. 70 okay, let me know, you guys, whether you want me to stop and go on another network and come back and re-record. Tell me right now. You want me to keep on with this message right now? Is this good enough for you? Or I can stop and go to plan B. Uh, hey, Pamela from Cleveland. Hey, Chad. Uh, so tell me right now. Tell me, tell me notes whether you want me to uh, come back with a second broadcast in a couple minutes. I'm wait, I'm, I'm waiting to get your your feedback because this is your. I'm doing this for you, and I'm in this crazy. Um, that's got crappy uh, connection, uh, as you're seeing. It's very sketchy. Um, so I'm I'm seeing some love marks. I'm not sure if those are like keep going. That, thumbs up. Keep going. Yes. Okay. Plan B. Robert <laughs> Stephen says. Keep going, Byron says. All right, here's what I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have. Uh, JL says you gotta watch it. She plan to watch it later. Sean says Plan B. Okay, I'm gonna try it one more time. I'm gonna try it one more time, and uh, if everybody seems to be saying Plan B, if it doesn't work, then I'll go to uh, I'll go to Plan B. So this lady um, uh, won the 750 million dollars, and let me walk you through what she did. The first thing she did. Uh, I see you, Ms. Barry. I, well, I'm going to keep going. Uh, is she, she paid taxes on the $750 million immediately. It's really very smart. Um, now, that took her net down to $336 million. But she doesn't owe anybody anything anymore. And I'd rather owe my mother. I'd rather owe the, I'd rather owe the, the payday lender. I'd rather owe anybody than to owe the tax man. The way they got Al Capone was not murder and mayhem. They didn't get Al Capone because of robbery and thievery and all the bad stuff he did. Hey, Marie Glover, I see you plan B, but I'm going to keep going for, the, for, for, the, for now. Uh, you guys know I love you, right? I mean, I'm broadcasting from this remote location. I know it keeps breaking up. Uh, and I could do nothing for the week that I'm here, but I wanted you... To, to get this message from me. So please excuse me. I'm sorry. When you watch this on rebroadcast, it'll all come back together. Let's see if I can finish this. So 
70% of all lottery winners lose every dime that they've won, 70%. 70% of all NFL players bankrupt in five years after retirement. Over 80% of NFL players bankrupt five years after retirement. You can go on and on and on. It's the same phenomenon. Common people, good people, decent, loving people who never got the memo. Hey, Trudy. Never understood financial literacy. Uh, never was taught how to, to manage their money or, ha happen, or manage their affairs. Uh, Zena, this lady won $750 million. That's uh, the message. But tie, that brought on this thing about, you know, oh, I won the lottery, now life's going to be easy. And actually, life's going to be anything but easy uh, in their lives. In fact, most people who won the lottery and lost it said they were better off before they won. So that's the point, Zena. That's what we're talking about today. So let me tell you what this lady did right. She took the $750, $750 million winning, and then she paid taxes on it. So she gave the government. And try to do this, uh, of course. <laughs> right when I say I'm out of here, it comes back. It comes back strong. Uh, O'Neill says uh, emotional spending. Yes, correct. Um, so, so, so she didn't get emotional about her money. She understood she had to pay her taxes, uh, and um, and uh, and took the net proceeds, decided to keep it as her own. The next thing she did was call her job and said, I quit. Now, that wasn't because she hated her job, because she loves her job, but she just said, you know, I need a break, I need to reset my life. So she decided to go home and, and put her, her head under the covers and sleep for a while and rest so that she could figure out what she really wanted to do with her life. See, she wasn't being lazy. She wasn't, she wasn't checking out of life. Hey, Esther Fife. She, she wasn't saying that, you know, she doesn't want to contribute to society. She wasn't saying she wanted to be a bum. She, she said, I, need to, I now have the time to figure out what's most important in my life. What do I keep asking you guys? What are you most passionate about? Isn't that the question? What are you most passionate about? And did you get the memo? What's your purpose? Hold on a minute. Okay. So then she says, I'm going to go pay off my car I bought in September. This is brilliant. So she, whatever car she bought, which is an affordable car, she said, I'm just going to go pay it off. And I go buy five new cars, I'm going to pay it off. The company that, where she bought the lottery ticket from, uh, it's called Pride Stores. The owner got $50,000 by selling her the ticket. He says he's going to donate that money to local charities. He won't say which charity, but he says it's going to benefit foster kids, children in need, education for kids, and local programming. You really cannot make up a better story than this, right? So, hey, Thomas, love my, my messages. Thank you very much. You're going to love even more what's coming next. We have a whole episodic series coming, but I won't get ahead of my communications team. So, so let me tell you about people who actually had it and lost it really big. Some examples. So uh, here's um, Lisa Arcane, Arcand, won a million dollars in Massachusetts at lottery, bought a house, and went on a vacations like many winners. Of course, a million dollars isn't much money after taxes. So she also opened a restaurant to make some additional income. Restaurants are horrible business to start. If you're trying for dependable income, you're gonna to have to live in that restaurant. Uh, thank you, Sergio, for ordering your copy of the memo. I just saw that. Everybody here, order pre-order your copy of the memo if you haven't already. Um, O'Neill says I'm passionate about empowering and motivating. I think you said others. Great. Um, so, uh, so <coughs> a restaurant's a horrible business to start. Hey, Michelle Bryant, uh, good name. Uh, unless uh, you're going to be there your, your, every day, you're working. On a minute. So, so she said that uh, in 20, 2007, she, she said uh, of the lottery experience, actually, it's been very depressing. So she said that even though she won the lottery, that uh, three years after she won the lottery, she said it was been an incredibly depressing experience for her. Uh, let me, I'm going to go right to like one of the saddest stories uh, that I know of. Um, let me see here. Uh, let me see here. This guy won uh, just a huge amount of money. Um, here he is. Uh, Jack Whitaker. Uh, he was already a millionaire when he won the money. Um, he was hardworking. Everything was working well in his life. He won $314 million, so almost as much as, much as this lady has won. Uh, the biggest single person lottery uh, winning it, it's, it, before this young lady. He opted for a lump sum payment, so he did it right, just like this lady. See here, 
Love your videos. Thank you very much. Who, who is that? Hey, Tia. That was uh, Yolanda Noli. Shared your Facebook Live. Thank you. We just hit 400,000 vi viewers and followers, by the way, so tell all your friends. Um, so here, so uh, he opted for a lump sum payment, did that right. Left, uh, he left him with $93 million. His contracting business, which employed over 100 people, provided for a great living, uh, but he also had a humble lifestyle. Nobody knew he had money. A lot of people go bad because they want to hook up their friends. They want, they want to buy love. They want to buy cars and gifts for everybody. And when you start enabling people, that doesn't go away. You start enabling somebody who doesn't know how to take care of themselves. Can I get an amen? They're going to have their hand out to you for the rest of their lives. Am I saying that you shouldn't give your friends some money? No, but give them, create a budget, figure out what you can afford to give, and give them that money. And So, okay, so, so this guy, Whitaker, um, the, 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 the lottery winnings attracted different kinds of attention, right? So now this guy who's living a humble lifestyle, now everybody's all over him like a cheap suit uh, and wants him to fund their lifestyle. No matter how much money you make, you can spend it. So the, the definition of stress is when your outflow exceeds your inflow, then your overhead will be your downfall. When your outflow exceeds your inflow, then your overhead will be your downfall. Can you spend $300 million? Yes, you can. <laughs> Um, so Whitaker spent money at strip clubs and casinos. Haven't I told you guys about strip clubs? Uh, he gave millions of charities. Thank you very much for that. But make, you got to make sure you can afford it. Uh, he had a habit of leaving cash in his car. That resulted in $545,000 in thefts from his car. He lost $600,000 in thefts and cash from his car. This is just like God gives you a gift and you have no response. We're going to finish this video, I promise you. So uh, here's a, the most heartbreaking part. Um, truth revealed. Hey, Edward, um, Austin. The most heartbreaking part was he tried to buy the love of his granddaughter. So versus spending time with his granddaughter, loving his granddaughter, telling his granddaughter I love you, going to the park with her, which is all she wanted in the first place, getting her a college education so she can go get her some education and do for herself, learn to fish. Don't just give somebody a fish. Teach him how to fish. Teach him how to own the lake. Versus doing that, uh, he showered his granddaughter with gifts and cash, uh, who's 16 years old, so she had no concept of what to do with all this, who spent most of that money on drugs. Within a year, she was found apparently. Things for sure. I, you know one thing's for sure, I never give up on you guys. So Whitaker um, said this was the most painful experiences of his whole life, um, and, and he was actually better off before he won. He, know, he, was having, he had a good living, he had a good life, but he thought that money would solve everything. It does not. So you've got to get the memo. You've got to get the education. You've got to understand uh, life and choices. Don't go buying a bunch of houses and cars you cannot afford, going to strip clubs. Uh, uh, and, and you've got to understand that wealth starts within yourself. So I'm going to end this video here because it's been very painful for you and for me with all the interruptions. I'm here in the middle of nowhere uh, in the Pacific Ocean, but I'm thinking about you. Love you much, unbought, unbossed, unbiased, coming you straight and no chaser from somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I love you and expect some real good video content and a couple surprise announcements coming this weekend and next week. Love you much. Give me some comments. I'll respond to each one.